So yesterday I was able to get the dash bar and the dash pad in place. I spent a lot of time looking at photos I had taken and also looking at the manual to make sure that I had all the wiring harness ends in the right spot. Today I'm going to try to get the rest of the instruments in. I just found a free PDF of the repair manual online. These are the instructions I followed during the removal. So I'm just going to use them in reverse to hopefully help put this thing back together. This is something I didn't really cover thoroughly in the last MR2 video. There are five bolts, five screws, and this one nut securing the dash itself. This one, this is a bolt hidden behind a heater vent. You have to pop out the vent to actually get to this bolt. So the five bolts, one, two, three, four, way back there. This was supposed to be number five, but unfortunately, although I did mask when I painted the dash bar, you can see it's painted black now, I somehow still managed to get a little POR 15 into those threads. Here's the one nut and the four screws. One, there's two, three, four, and then the fifth one will hop back over here. It's up above where the glove box would be. Number five. So right now I have what I think is the bare minimum needed to just get the car started before I finish installing like the seat and the rest of the trim pieces. I just want to make sure it'll fire up. I think I have all the wiring harness ends connected to the right spot, <laughs> but fingers crossed, knock on wood. Right, it runs. <laughs> Last thing I wanted to do is I need to burp the coolant because we opened up the coolant system to delete the heater core. So there's probably a little bit of air introduced. I have the no spill funnel hooked up. I went to Toyota and just got the genuine coolant for this. This is the older red coolant for old Toyotas. Some distilled water. And then the funny thing with this car, because it's mid-engine, the coolant piping needs to run all the way to the front to get to the radiator. You also gotta burp it at the front. There is a service hose already attached to this heater valve, and there is another hose I attached to the radiator. So we got both of them strung up, we'll open up the valves behind them, and then hopefully we'll see some coolant come up and maybe some bubbles if there's some air in there. And just a quick note, because I disconnected the heater core, I actually don't have the heater lever inside the car hooked up to this valve any longer. So we're just gonna manually push this back to open that valve. That will allow coolant to flow through here so we can burp it. The surface bulletin says we need to open this valve for this burping location three turns. You can see it just back there, that little white valve. And this one as well, it says three turns, but I don't know how accurate that is. We'll just have to see what actually works. I think if you open it too much, it starts to leak out. All 
All right, I just cracked these open and we have coolant coming through from the radiator and from the heater valve. Sorry about the noise at the front of the car. The front radiator fan is on like all the time and it's at like Mach 1 speed. I did a little searching on the forums and I think it's because I removed the heating system and there's a switch up there that needs to be jumped in order for the fan to only kick on when the thermostat kicks the cooling to the front of the car. For now, it's just on all the time. It's kind of annoying and it's really loud. I'll just deal with it for now. All right, the MR2 is bled. I removed the no spill funnel, put the rad cap back on, and over at the front, remove the hoses, close that valve back up, and close this petcock back up. And I know some people also raise the rear of the car, and I've heard some people talk about raising the front, but I'm not sure. The Toyota service bulletin that I read just said leave the car flat. They made no mention of raising it, so there's a lot of info out there. I tried it this way this time. <laughs> 